Hey, everybody! Hi, friends! Well, from Georgia, Salt Lake City, Utah... It's Thank God I'm Atheist. The podcast. I'm Frank Feldman. And I'm Dan Beecher. And coming up on the show today, Dan, uh, we're going to be talking about, well, it, we're, we're going to have a conversation. Uh, we're going on a this, witch hunt. This, <laughs> we found out about this new museum of magic, fortune telling, and witchcraft over there in Scotland. Yeah. And uh, got us got us thinking. And we're gonna so, we're gonna, we're gonna hunt some witches. <laughs> so we won't, we're gonna talk about all that kind we're of stuff. We're gonna burn some sage and I don't know. Ooh, I'll tell smudging, your smudging, I'll tell, smudging is yeah. huge right now, Dan. It's oh, oh my god, it is so hot right now. <laughs> you can like buy smudging kits at Target. <laughs> oh um, my god, I don't know if that's true. I just made that up. I'm but. certain it's true. <laughs> don't fact check us. Just <laughs> know that we never tell a lie. So. If you hear it from us, it's true. Uh, all right. Well, Dan, we've talked about it on the show before, this uh, Swedish obsession with burning Qurans. Oh, they just do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't do it. It was a it was a, a, a an Iranian guy or, an, or Iraqi yeah, or something. Iraqi immigrant. A Christian. Oh, Iraqi. he was a Christian? Mm-hmm. Uh, immigrant oh, you have it right there to sweden and he had some bone to pick and so he burned a quran it caused a big hubbub as these things do right mm. you burn yeah. a quran in sweden and a building burns down in somewhere in the middle east <laughs> it's it's um, the butterfly effect of offending <laughs> muslims <laughs> anyway um well also it's not just Emb- Swedish embassies burning down, which didn't happen. It was no, stormed. they just, but it did got it get invaded briefly. Yeah. So, that's... Um, but uh, in response to the Quran being burned this uh, last month, um, a man has filed a request that has been approved by the Swedish police uh, to burn the Torah no. and the Bible. Outside okay. uh, the Israeli embassy in uh, Stockholm. Great. And um, is this a Muslim man? Uh, well, it's in response to it. Actually, yeah. probably because of privacy laws, they're um, they're not revealing they're not revealing names of, okay. of like who filed the the the, <laughs> the, the, the 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 thing. But it was it was approved on the grounds that the Swedish. Um, sort of standard for approving a protest is not what they're protesting or how they're doing it. It's um, it's based on whether they believe the the public gathering can be held without major disruptions or risk to public safety, <laughs> which 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 is arguable. Uh, well, to, I'll tell you this much: you're a lot safer burning those books than <laughs> than the Quran. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair you're enough. Gonna, this... You're going to get some eye rolls. You're going to get some harumphs. Oh, and that's no. about as far as it's going to go. No, uh, you actually have um, the Council of Swedish uh, Jewish Communities um, who had this to say Our tragic European history links the burning of Jewish books um, with pogroms, expulsions, inquisitions, and the Holocaust. Um, so they are looking at this as anti-Semitic, which it's of obviously anti-Semitic. Um, of course it is. <laughs> That's not the point. The point is, are you going to attack this person? No, you're going to release a statement. You, you denounced the action. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it is, it is wild. There is obviously going to be, um, sort of, uh, uh the, the, these responses are not in proportion with each other. No. Um, also, like, um, yeah, it, it, it's, I don't know that this whole, like, um, tit for tat or eye for an eye type response is, is great. But, you know, if it settles the score, fine. Right. Yeah. Like, like, I mean, I, of course, the Bible and the Torah are not sacred to me. So I don't really have any, you know, skin in the game. And se, books are but, books. But yeah, they, but it's just... They it's, are not magical. You know, you're not actually... God doesn't live in them. 
Yeah. So you cannot, you know, you're not hurting anybody really. Yeah, but it's still the symbol of the whole thing, right? Yeah, it's you're, what it you're hurting stands someone's for. Feelings. feelings will be hurt. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and that's not good. It's but, not nice. I mean, the whole thing it it stems to this to this like the whole idea of like how wise it is to do these kind of things. Right? <laughs> yeah. Like a government should not be getting involved in 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 banning these sort of protests right no and people around the world need to just understand that in the west largely this is how it's going to be and should be handled right it's just yeah. sorry like um we we're not going to take a big stand on this although i think sweden did give a little bit didn't they in order to get turkey to uh i don't know let them into the I, I didn't follow that story, but too closely. <laughs> I remember is I heard about it on NPR that Sweden is is going to be allowed into NATO thanks to something that they did. But uh, but nonetheless, um, don't burn these books just because it's rude, right? But you can no, do it. But, but, don't, but you can we do also it need to protect the want right. To. We also need to protect the right to do it. Yes, it's so. it's that's important that the that the right be protected. And look, if you have a Quran and you want to burn it at your house in front of all of your friends, you can do that. <laughs> just don't videotape it and put it on the internet. Cause well, it's also that's, that's just going to cause more hubbub than it needs to. It's also, mm. I mean, not for nothing. Like it could be personally dangerous. Yeah, it could to, 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 to do that sort of action publicly. Like, yeah. no matter how much I believe it, and obviously in the United States, like, there's no question, just go burn a, go burn a book, right? But, like, <laughs> um, I wouldn't do it, right? No. Because, one, the point that you're making is outright offensive, right? You don't need to go that far, right? Yeah. You know, you know what button you're pushing, right? And just because you can push it doesn't mean you, that you need to, yeah. right? And and that should be the kind of statements that are coming out about this kind of stuff. But yeah, it, it seems... doesn't. It, yeah, it, 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 it. I mean, the truth of the matter is that the response that you know these uh, that that these countries and these people are having to it is disproportional. It it. I mean, it's it is. They're you know their response is a little extreme. Mm -hmm. But so what? Just just don't just don't do it. Don't hurt people's feelings. There's just no good reason to hurt anybody's feelings. Anyway, all right. Uh, I'm going to move on to uh, a thing. I don't know if you know this, but uh, there's a uh, a uh, sexual predator and uh, accused felon running for the United States of America. <sighs> yes. Uh, and that so that's happening. Please tell me it's the one that I'm thinking of, and there, there's not another. <laughs> but th in this case, <laughs> I'm talking about former President uh, Donald Trump. Oh, thank God, thank the God. Donald. <laughs> um, he he recently addressed the Road to Majority Conference. Oh, uh, wow. which by the way, I want to point out that the underlying message of naming your right wing conference Road to Majority is that they are in the minority. <laughs> and we should remember that because that's a happy thought. <laughs> um, however, the, this minority of people uh, had this conference and uh, Donald Trump spoke at it. He, he gave a speech that was very clearly written for him by someone who understands all of the coded language. Uh, and I, okay. I'm going to... He said, and also understands like language that will appeal to uh right-wing christian nutballs mm. so one of his lines was together we're warriors in a righteous crusade to stop the <laughs> now, i'm going to he does a, a short list of the bad guys in in the world oh okay he's uh, he but he leaves himself off Correct. Is okay. He is obviously the only good guy that really exists. <laughs> um, I'm going to say that all of the other bad guys, there's only one that is just the actual group that he's that he names. 
The rest of the groups are code words. Oh, okay. So, uh, but, but it, you know, it's dog whistles so that people don't catch it. Anyway, um, the one that was... Uh, I'll just read the list. Uh, Together we're warriors in the righteous crusade to stop the arsonists, the atheists, the globalists, and the Marxists. Oy, oy, oy. Now, okay. uh, obviously... I'm talking about this because of the inclusion of us, the atheists, whom I bet he doesn't even know what an atheist is. I would bet money that if you had the chance to catch him off guard and you just said, hey, what's an atheist? He wouldn't know. <laughs> he would just go blather on about, well, they're a bad guy and blah, blah, blah. But I'll bet he couldn't define it. Um, however, I so obviously him calling us out as a group is playing into a very real and very scary uh, mindset that is happening in our country right now. And I frankly don't know how to push back against it. I don't know how to push back because here's the thing. The, the extreme right in our country mm -hmm. has decided a whole bunch of shit and won't hear anything else. They hmm. won't hear that, you know, drag queens aren't grooming children for sex. Right. They they won't hear that trans people aren't grooming children for sex. They won't hear that atheists aren't Satanists, aren't devil worshiping like people out to to hurt Christians. That's right. the that's all they believe we are. Right. And I don't know how to combat that. I don't know that you can take it head on with them. I think yeah. the, the the point is and it's probably the case with anything, you know, uh, political or um, religious or whatnot. I mean, like, like it's it's the middle that you have to go yeah. for. I mean, that's it, right? Like, well, because you're right, you're never going to convince them. All you can do is kind of convince the middle. Hopefully, that's enough that you can like right. keep these people at bay with their crazy ideas and. Yeah. A gen hopefully a generation passes and those ideas either moderate a little bit or well, they and start it's what to see we reality. Have talked about, Maybe, it's what hopefully. we've talked about ad nauseum, which yeah. is visibility is absolutely essential. Oh, totally, yeah. We need to, like, everyone needs to know that they know a kind atheist. Yeah. That they know a good person who happens to be an atheist. Yeah. Like, everybody out there should know should be able to say that in their lives oh there's this guy i or there's this woman i guess they're actually pretty cool and they have told me outright to my face that they are atheist yeah um i do i do want to mention we the need a, we, uh, yeah the coded language for the other things because i uh, there's one that i've heard many times there's a couple that i've heard many times globalists and marxists Globalist is code for Jews. Uh -huh. In case anybody has any doubt about that, that is absolutely just anti-Semitic code for Jews. Uh, Marxist is just code for we can dismiss anything that someone on the left says about politics because they're communists. Right. Um, arsonists is interesting. It's new. I have not heard that one, but I have an assumption of what it what it's meant to be a dog whistle for. Yeah. which is Black Lives Matter. Oh, okay. Because all they talked about during the Black Lives Matter protests were the riots that happened where they burned down property all, all over the place, uh, which happened a tiny little bit. Uh, there was a little bit of petty property crime. Uh, right. But I'm guessing that the arsonists is black people. Were you, were you able to like, like look it up? And is it, is it not really out there? I don't know. I did not look it up. Because I'm just, yeah. Someone, hmm. okay, so someone out there who knows uh, knows all the dog whistles and whatever, uh, set me straight if I'm wrong <laughs> about that. I mean, it, it totally makes sense. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Because, I mean, that's the thing with a dog whistle. It needs to be veiled, but understandable. Right? Yeah, it needs to be something where, like... And once you, like, if you know the, enough of the story then you know yeah. what they're talking about. And that right. fits. That does fit. And it has to give plausible deniability. Mm -hmm. I'm just mad at people who burn things. 
It's very a, frustrated by it. There's a real problem with arson in this country right you now. You guys, somebody's setting things on fire, and we don't know who it is. <laughs> the anyway. arsonist. That is a wild one. Yeah. Hmm. Arsonists, atheists, globalists, and Mark. First of all, someone might have been fucking with him because those are hard words to say, <laughs> and he is not particularly adept at saying words. The righteous crusade to stop the arsonists, the atheists, the glub. I think his tongue probably. I can't believe he made it through. I never saw a video of this, <laughs> but I can't believe that he actually said all of those things. Oh, golly. All right. Anyway. Okay, Dan. Do you know what's coming up later this year, Dan? In September? Uh, September? Your birthday. It, that's true. Um, and I feel so lucky to have been born, Dan, uh, in the in the beautiful month of September, which mm. is also known as American Founders and Constitution Month. <laughs> well, um, and that is, for those of you who don't live in the United States, <laughs> we're very fond of our American Founders and Constitution Month. We, uh, we pay <laughs> so much attention. Deal. Well, did you know that, that Constitution Day is September 17th? Um, Did you know that, Dan? Constitution I, Day. Let me let me let me tell you something about Constitution Day. That's not a thing. <laughs> no, it is, Dan. It totally <laughs> is. At least I believe that it is, but it's not. At least according to the Utah State Legislature. Okay, uh, fine. which is designated se the month of September uh, each year. This is going to be a recurring thing as American Founders and Constitution Month, which is being um, sort of spearheaded by. <laughs> I can't even believe they're trying to, to claim this. A nonpartisan group um, uh -huh. called Why Love America, <laughs> um, which is, which they their stated goal is to re-energize a spirit of patriotism and recognition of God's hand in the origin and destiny of America. There it is. That we will be a nation under God, not without God. Uh -huh. <sighs> anyway... Right. So, um, so that's happening, right? Uh, the reason I'm bringing it up is because, oh God, um, the, uh, the Mormon church is, uh, a very hierarchical organization. How dare you? <laughs> With all sorts of different committees and little groups and, um, one of one of which is the Utah area presidency. There's an area mm. president of the church, which is over. He's over like the stake presidents, right? And yeah. sort of how the whole whole thing works. And the stake presidents being sort of like bishops in Catholic Catholic Church, like they're over sort of a diocese, right? It's so funny um, how we try to explain Mormonism to our listeners. It's just like. You know what? We may, we might yeah. want to give up on that. It's well, just I mean, so yeah. So you have your ward, which is your local congregation. Then you have a stake, which is a collection of wards. And then you have an area, which is a collection of stakes. Ugh. If that makes any sense to anybody. If you follow, yeah. right? Yeah. Anyway, so the Utah area presidency uh, sent out a memo to stake presidents, bishops, and branch presidents um, okay. that... Uh, that sort of explains this whole thing that it's been designated as this wonderful time to to think about the founding of the country and our wonderful constitution, our oh, yeah. our uh, perfect, the incredibly flawed but perfect document. Uh, Wait, an inspired. They said that document. No, no. Okay, dear God, that's my words. Uh, okay. But the state legislature has requested. This is from directly from the letter. Uh, the state legislature has requested that civic, fraternal, and religious organizations, quote, recognize and observe this occasion through appropriate programs, teaching, uh, meetings, services, or celebrations. In the spirit of that request, we encourage your stake to sponsor one patriotic event during the month of September that would, one, rekindle a spirit of patriotism by educating our saints on the inspired principles of the Constitution, and then it has Doctrine and Covenants, uh, versus cited uh -huh. and or to build a spirit of appreciation for our founding fathers who were raised up by the Lord 
also with the Doctrine and Covenants uh, <laughs> verses cited there. Um, and they have some ideas as to what some of these activities could be. Thank God. I was, I was really, <laughs> I was searching. I couldn't figure out what I would have done. Uh, these are events that might be sponsored by stakes. Um, a patriotic concert. Oh. A patriotic art display. Uh, a special patriotic devotional. Uh-huh. Um, a patriotic parade. I want to see that one. <laughs> a neighborhood parade. A neighborhood parade. Oh my God, that's, that's so sad. That's patriotic. That's not <laughs> in the month of July. Like, okay. That, um, that is amazing. This is my favorite. This sounds so fun, Dan. Um, a constitution read along. Oh. So you, you get together and you read the constitution. Dan. Everybody loves that. Bring the kids. They'll have a great time. <laughs> um, and then uh, some ideas for families. Um, I'll skip most of them. Um, one of them, though, is to fly the American flag for the month of September. Um, okay. Which I, the, the flag is flown so much yeah. that I don't even know what it could, like, what it could possibly be, be being flown for. Right, at yeah. any given time. Because you don't know if it was, um, you know. I mean, it's like, it's always at half mast <laughs> as well, right? Although I think we've yeah, given because... up on that. Like, unless it was like a shooting that was local, like, yeah, we, we, uh, the flags would just constantly be at half mast, but whatever. Yeah. Um, so, um, this is all It's one of the good. things that Americans are most proud of and foreigners are most like confused and like <laughs> upset by is how how much our flag yeah. is flown here um a lot of this does not really need to be pointed out but uh peggy fletcher stack over at the salt lake tribune uh took it upon herself to sort of look into who this group is um and she points out that um that this that this letter going out from the area presidency is is coming out Within a month of the, the 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 top brass at the church, the first presidency, warning um, the general Mormon population against straight party voting, mm. right? And um, which everybody saw is like, wow, that's actually really good. That no, they're trying <laughs> to point out that Democrats can be welcome in the church too, right? <laughs> um, yeah, right? But now you have the Utah area presidency almost seemingly going rogue, right? Yeah. Um, because this this organization, Why I Love America, um, is um, at least one of the, 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 the top Utah leaders of the group um, includes... Oh, I'm sorry. This is just the group itself um, includes at least one 2020 election denier, uh, uh -huh. no known Democrats. Right. Um, and um, let's see, what was the other thing? There was some other sort of questionable figure involved in, in like the top of this organization. The hell and you say? I know, crazy, right? And yet they have the gall to call themselves um, a nonpartisan group. Uh, yeah. Their quote to that effect is, well, this is actually coming from the church because like she reached out to the church to say, Hey, like what's going on here. And one of their, t their spokespersons said, the church has always held the constitution as important in the founding of this nation and encourage our members to study its origin and understand its principles. We do not believe that doing so is a partisan issue, except for the whole fact we were just talking about like dog whistles, right? Uh -huh. And the fact that like this kind of patriotism only appeals to conservative types, right? Like the kind yeah, of patriotism. Jingoistic, yeah. like. Like the kind of like, patriotism that I feel, which is not this, right? Because I've had to kind of identify like, and, and because, because they sort of own this concept, right? On the right. Yeah. And I've had to kind of like consider like, well, is there, is that all that patriotism is, right? Yeah. Like I don't really self apply the word patriotic to myself, 
No. But I think that I have like a healthy um, level of, of um, you know, I like where I live, right? Yeah. I like this country. It's my home, right? Um, and I shouldn't be made to feel lesser of a citizen, right? Like I'm, right. I'm a participant. I vote. Yeah. I care about the direction of the country. Well, right? and I, citizenship is important to you. And it is. Yeah. And it's like, and yet their ownership of, of, of this word and, and through this kind of activity, um, is really off putting to me. Yeah. Right. And to so many other Americans who probably feel like I do. Right. Of like, I'm concerned about our direction. This is my only home. I'm not going to move some, some other country. Right. Right. Um, and, well, and the other thing is that like for people like us, mm -hmm. patriotism involves wanting to improve your country where you Correct. see it has faults. Correct. Yeah. And for them, it's unpatriotic to even, uh, to even like say that your country has faults. Well, the faults are the other people in the country and they must be excised. <laughs> right, right. Right. Like, yeah. Like they're like, that's, Our that's, country how, they, is that's perfect. how they see the faults. Yeah. And we need to get rid of all them other people that don't think so. Or it would be, would be perfect if right. not for the fucking Democrats. Right. Yep. And liberals and, you know, Drag and whoever whoever <laughs> our, our leaders say we have to hate next right yeah arsonists it's yeah, the it's, it's the, the damned arsonists. arsonists that are really ruining the country <laughs> oh man all right well i'm gonna take us to traverse city michigan oh uh which is i which i know nothing about uh other than it's in michigan anyway uh a a salon owner has has taken a stand now this falls hard on the uh, the the decision by uh, the Supreme Court in the 303 Creative case that allowed a web designer to not, or sorry, a potential web designer who has not, who had never made a business of web designing, mm. to not have to make a fake, a potential web design. For people that never asked her to, um, <laughs> who might happen to be gay and want to get married. Uh, anyway, this has emboldened uh, peop good Christians across the country mm. uh, who may not quite have seen coming what actually happens when you fuck around and find out too much. Uh, this is Studio 8 Hair Lab. Uh, oh. They're in Traverse City, Michigan. Okay. Uh, 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 the, the owner of it, Christine Geiger, uh, posted a thing on their, uh, on their, uh, business Facebook that, uh, that got a little, brought a little heat down. Oh no. Which was, uh, it, it's, <laughs> this is the post. Um, if he, and there's, there's trans bullshit in this so oh, that's a, that's your trigger warning okay. sorry I, I i feel terrible right now because so many of our stories are about the hatred of the trans community yeah. and i don't i don't need our trans listeners feeling any worse than they already do right but uh this is where our country's at so i'm gonna say it um this is oh okay here's what she wrote if a human identifies as anything other than a man slash woman Please seek services at a local pet groomer. You are not welcome in this salon. Oh my God. Period. Uh, I think she thought that was pretty clever. Uh, pretty funny. There was more to it. You know, it goes on to say, should you request to have a particular pronoun used, please note we may simply refer to you as, hey, you, regardless of... Michigan House Bill 4744, kiss my ass, Governor Witchmere. Uh, <laughs> this person. I'm not even going to go into is that. Is witty. Yeah, anyway. You, <laughs> Good with everyone words, gets the, too. The point. Uh, and then uh, she justifies all of this by saying, this is America, semicolon, free speech. Oh, God. This small business has the right to refuse services. We are not bound to any oaths 
as realtors are regarding discrimination. I don't know why she called out realtors. <laughs> uh, my recent airport experience validates this. I didn't even look into what the airport experience is. Couldn't because that account is now shut down. No. Or, or at least made private or whatever. Uh, and it is not, I don't know if you know this, it is not great for your business when your business's ca- account has to go private. <laughs> that is, that's not generally considered ideal for your business account. Right, right, right. Uh, this per- she did hashtags, take a stand, and Garrett Soldano, I had to look up who Garrett Soldano was, who he apparently is a chiropractor who ran for governor oh, okay. and lost. Uh, and But I'm, I take it, I tried to look up like what his stances were on things, but it just seemed like sort of your, your standard right-wing hatred. Uh, <laughs> he was very upset about mask mandates and, and lockdowns and stuff. Yeah. I mean, I would assume that uh, trans folk out there probably are careful about the kinds of the salons that they go to. Yeah. Because, I'm, because yeah. there, there's there's a, a salon right down the street from me that is, um, and they do sort of um, uh, trans and queer haircuts. Mm. And that's, that's, that's what they're known for. That's what they do. A lot of blue and pink dye in that one. Maybe so. I don't know. Purple. But, but that's what they do. And, um, and I see on Reddit a lot, like th- this question will come up, where can I go? to get a haircut right does anybody know where you know and i'll and and feel safe yeah exactly um so and somebody who will be sensitive and who will listen to my request for how i want my hair there's a lot of people a lot of times the 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 what's the the word stylist Stylist. beautician kept coming to mind and that feels a little dated um (laughs) <laughs> okay, June Cleaver. Thanks. Sometimes, you know, the beautician will just take it upon um, <laughs> herself to just do whatever, yeah, whatever she wants instead of listening to the client. Anyway, right. at, at least this is what I'm sort of gathering from stuff I've read, and and so like I think people are already being careful about what they where they go. This bigot doesn't need to put up a sign or be so public about this. Yeah, so. the, this particular bigot also uh, then posted, then sort of doubled down. I think she thought she was fixing it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, she she wrote uh, in another post, I have no issues with, with LGB. It's the <laughs> TQ plus that I'm not going to support. Draw the line. And the, she goes on to say, and this it's kind of important that people understand that this this imp- this idea is out there, so we should all be combating this idea. Mm. For, she wrote, for those that don't know what the plus is for, it's for MAP, minor attracted person, oh, a.k.a. pedophile. Wow. This stance was taken to ensure that clients have the best experience, blah, 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 blah. No, it isn't. No, it absolutely isn't. That's not what the plus Jesus is for. But Christ. But you should understand that, like, Probably Breitbart and Newsmax have had guests on saying that that's what it is. They've been really working this the uh, the angle that you know that the the queer community is embracing pedophilia, <sighs> and that's what that's what drag queen story hour is about, and that's what trans people are doing. They're they're grooming the children. Jesus Christ. So yeah, I mean. That is, yeah, do do what you can to to stamp to stamp that out quickly. But yes, as of right now, all of their social media is uh, shut down, and I think uh, I think every thinking, feeling human in Traverse City is like, well, eh, maybe we're not going to get our hair cut with that lady. Good. I mean, on principle, people should. I don't. Yeah. You know, she might be amazing. She might. She might be the best stylist in town. Yeah, I doubt it. But um, I yeah, <laughs> but but yeah, Which could be. You, it's okay to not get your hair done by the best stylist yeah. in town if they're awful. Yeah, if they're a bigot. Yep. Hmm. Well, that's that's good. Damn. I'm fine with bigots losing business. That's okay. <laughs> 
I mean, in a way, this whole like, like, you know, the cake thing and the website thing, like it is at the yeah. end of the day, it's like, all right, thanks for letting me know, not right that you don't want my money. Yeah, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have wanted to go to you anyway. Yeah. Now we know, but you're not. But yeah. also, you're not allowed to not serve people you shouldn't be you are now not allowed or well allowed and, and people, people like but. are reaching a little too like the, the the a lot of the the understanding of of this it's it, any place that's like like a restaurant does not have the right to to, yeah. to say no or a and they're hotel gonna start to. or they they they're probably gonna test it right yep it's um, gonna start but it's that gonna is happen. not what that decision was about right um, well i mean so. it may have been what that decision was about to this court because this court's crazy well yeah but this, the 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 way that it's being understood is that it's yeah it does not extend to restaurants and 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 right and places that are not sort of doing customized like quote unquote artistic yeah things. exactly yeah um Alrighty, Dan. Well, continuing on with the whole Quran thing, um, it's got the attention of the UN, that's the United Nations, um, Rights Council. Um, mm. And they, <laughs> uh, which has approved a controversial re uh, resolution um, that urges countries to, quote, address, prevent, and prosecute acts and advocacy of religious hatred. Um, this uh, was strongly opposed by the U.S., the EU, uh, and other Western countries. Um, which, in the process, when when this was being proposed, um, you know, they argue they were arguing um, that it, that such a stance would conflict with uh, laws on free speech, and. Okay. Um, but the, the resolution passed last Wednesday uh, mm. with 28 countries voting in favor, 12 voting against, and 7 abstaining. Um, and this is in response to this um, Iraqi-born protester up in uh, um, Sweden. Right. That, uh, and this has some details I hadn't really heard. I don't think we talked about. Uh tore pages from the Quran, wiping his shoes with some of them and burning other pages of the, of the Quran outside of a mosque, which we, yeah. we knew about that part. Um, disrespecting a book, disrespecting a book in a very disrespectful way. Yeah. Um, and in a way that he knew would be particularly, um, irksome, right. To, yes. to Muslims out in the world. Yeah. Very much designed to be hurtful and offensive. Yeah. Um, let's see. Pakistan's foreign minister said that such acts were, quote, an incitement to religious hatred, discrimination, and violence, um, and occurred under uh, government sanction and with a sense of impunity. Um, and let's see. There you go. Uh, some commentators in Sweden uh, have argued that the protest um, should be regarded as hate speech. Um, mm. which is outlawed, right? And that's okay. actually where I wanted to pick this up um, because we, yeah. we've said that we believe strongly in sort of, you know, the free speech part of it. But is this hate speech, Dan? Yeah, uh, not no. My yeah. answer to that is not no. Yeah, I know, right? Like, it really, that point in particular, like... I, a lot of, a lot of the, I think the Americans and the Europeans, one of the German envoy, maybe somebody was like, we just wish we had more time. They, they, the, the conservatives on this council pushed this through, right? From mm -hmm. these different, the conservatives from these very religious countries pushed this through and we were begging them to, for us to continue the conversation right and to come up with a statement that we could pass unanimously right that denounces yeah. the actions right acknowledges that that these are highly offensive actions but that can still somehow embrace 
you know, a more open, you know, society's outlook on this, right? And yeah. but but this point, and I and it's really one I would I actually would love to hear from listeners on is this hate speech, right? Is it and and because I I know where I fall on hate speech, like. It should Which be. Is what? It sh- I think it should be illegal, but the but okay. but there there are it, it, the the problem with it is where to draw the line. Yeah. Where where is the line that separates free speech from hate speech? And uh, and I know that I know that you know legal minds have like figured this kind of stuff out and defined it, especially for different you know societies, but. It this is this was an act that was designed to specifically provoke a community. Yeah, I think that's fair. And I, and I'm not sure that that's where the line should be because you should be able to like say things that are controversial, right? Yeah. Um, but the act of burning a sacred book is it is it demonstrating hatred toward that come? that that community in a way that should be against the law see i'm i i don't know i don't know i i'm not taking a stand here so don't miss i don't know that i am taking a stand i don't know that uh hate speech if it doesn't have if it's not inciting people to violence specifically or or to uh to some sort of dangerous action yeah I don't know that I think it should be illegal. I don't know on that. But point. didn't uh, this this did incite people to violence? This directly yeah, but can it incited be incited the wrong people. I'm saying if it incites people to violence against your targeted group, mm. meaning I'm saying like like you know if my hate speech against Christians or whatever, blah blah blah. That's interesting. Uh, in spite in in you know incites people to violence against the group that I'm targeting. Sure. Okay. Then I'm then 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 we're in some different territory. But if it is just Offend, someone offending de- the other side, declaring that they hate somebody, I don't approve of that hatred. But hmm. uh, I'm I'm uh, uh, that's tricky. I know it's tricky. I, I don't know where I fall. But it it was the thing that got me to kind of question my certainty. Sure. That this should just be a free speech issue. Well, I th- I think we will have people write into us about it. I'm I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna close us out with a, another bit of speech uh, that unfortunately had a really negative effect. Mm. Um, in the opposite way that it should have, this this speech should have been great. And I'm using speech in the loose uh, legalistic sense of the word. Uh, there is apparently in a uh, a rural. Michigan school, a health clinic that is sort of located within the school. It services the, the children of the school and is frequently the best way for these kids to have access to health care. Uh, and it is, uh, it's run by an outside group, but it is associated with the school. Hmm. Uh, and it, you know, it was just, it's just there to sort of service the children of the community I think that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. It's a little weird, but it's but you know I don't know the needs of rural people, and you know I, I assume that they do need clinical care, and so having a clinic there is great. Uh, and they decided to put up, you know, they're on camp, they're on the school grounds. They decided to do a mural that they hired a, a middle schooler to to paint for them. That is all about how everybody is welcome there. And uh, they want people to stay healthy. It says the words stay healthy right on the mural. The mural includes little cartoon critters and a heart with a Band-Aid on it. Aww. And, uh, and you know, a little doggy with a sort of nurse hat and a little bunny sort of nurse hat thing. It's cute. There's a nurse bear. <laughs> uh and uh, and then kids, you know, because that's what you do mm. on such a mural. Yeah. Um, however, uh, you may not have caught it if you looked at it briefly. Um, but it's Satanist. 
Is it? There are, yeah. Oh my gosh! Oh uh, no! It is, it is it it is the worst thing that you can possibly imagine. Um, <laughs> because Shirts. brace yourself, oh, no. uh, everyone who's afraid of Satan. There is a kid in rainbow tights and another kid in a shirt that has light blue and light pink on it, such that it becomes the trans flag. Oh, oh. no! How awful, Dan. Oh, it is... Tell me something it is, horrible happened to this clinic so I can feel uh, feel better. The, the, the clinic's gone. Oh, shit, really? They're closing the clinic. Over the mural? Even, they didn't take down... Well, okay, listen. They didn't say it was about the mural. What? They just... The mural happened. People literally freaked out and used words like satanic <laughs> and mental illness oh and blah 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 and then uh without explaining anything about why or you know putting any uh, giving any kind of uh explanation uh they closed down the clinic. oh my god how the school board voted what and out it goes they didn't have any public discussion about it oh god they just held a vote and out it went and uh, I'm. I, I'm appalled. This is this is literally, <laughs> this is this is community me. members yeah. denying their children yeah. health care yeah. because they were worried about. There's also a uh, what is that hand sim symbol called? The the Hamsa hand, which is the oh. hand. It's kind of got an eyeball in the in the palm of it, and it's got two thumbs basically on either side. Oh. Uh, Anyway, it sort of wards off the evil eye in some oh. in some cultures or whatever. Sure. It's 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 a good luck charm, but you know it, it's a magic amulet from the Middle East or whatever. I don't know. I'm sure someone objected to that. That was there too. But, yeah. Good Just off lord, in a this child. Yeah, whoever whoever this is, this demonic child. Oh, it's so <laughs> it's so sad. The, we've lost the the children, Frank. Oh. <laughs> they believe in they they think gay people are okay. They got good luck charms. They're oh they're into anime. Why are they into anime? What's happening? <laughs> Satan, anyway. Dan. Satan. Oh, Satan is uh, Satan's bad on the left, and so kids don't get health care. Good lord! All right. So uh, that's a fun place to end our news. There, don't worry. There's more segments coming up. But if you would like to write into to us about that or any of our news topics, just write to podcast at thankgodimatheist.com or call and leave us a voicemail message. We'd love to hear your voice. The telephone number is four two four six 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 eight four four two. Stick around. There's more show coming up. Well, Frank, uh, since since we've already been big bummers this whole already for the for the How show, dare you. we might as well continue <laughs> the trend. Um, you know, we've talked a little bit about all the groups that get hated in this country right now, and uh, we talked about the globalists. Uh, and lest you think I was exaggerating when I mentioned that people are you know anti-Semitic here in these United States when they say words like that. Here's somebody who doesn't feel the need to code his language. Hmm. This is a preacher named Tanner Furrer, who uh, who uh, is very, very concerned about politics in the United States uh, and decided to do... The, what we're going to get is not the full list, but apparently took six minutes to list, uh, to, to read off a list of people oh. Uh, oh. and... and We'll 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 hear a few. Okay, times. all right. I just got a list of the current administration. By Joe uh, Joe Biden's at, uh, administration is filled with Jews in very high positions of power. They have huge influences over policies that are being made. And you say you wonder why our our nation is getting further away from uh, Christian values, and and really policies are starting to attack Christian values. Well, it's because there's a lot of Jews in positions of power. 
Ron Klein. He's the chief of staff, but he resigned this year, but he was replaced by, guess it, what, you know, a, another Jew, Jeffrey Zeitz. You have David Cohen, CIA deputy director, basically the second in command of the CIA. Avril Haines, director of national intelligence. I mean, you notice kind of a theme here. You have the director of national intelligence, the CIA deputy director. You have uh, the national security advisor for cybersecurity, like the secretary of homeland security. I, all of these uh, uh, agencies that deal with in international affairs, the security of our nation, they're all run by Jews. You have the special envoy to monitor and combat anti-Semitism. You have the commissioner of the United States Commission on International Religious Freedom. So a Jew is running this uh, uh, organization that's supposed to promote religious freedom throughout the world. And it's a Jew. Give me a break. So, I mean, that's a long list of Jews in the current administration. And that's just now. Give me a break, Frank. <laughs> Uh, what, you should have a Christian in there protecting freedom of religion, right? A hundred percent, yes. If you think, <laughs> if you're asked, Tanner Fur. <laughs> well, yeah, because again, protecting freedom of religion means protecting Christianity. Yeah, right, exclusively. And so, if you if you have a Jew protecting freedom of religion, well, they're only going to be protecting Jews. I mean, that's how they see it's, it, right? Yeah, like, and yeah. it's because they because that's all that they would. That's do. all they would do. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. I think that the other thing is that, you know, he started off at early on in that clip, he started talking about how the reason that we're falling away from Christian values is all the Jews. I, 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 I'm certain that this man couldn't name a value that Christians hold mm. that is like 90% of your book is like everyone who wrote the Bible was Jewish. Right. What are you talking about? <laughs> Those are Jewish values. Right. Oh, right. Uh, very, I, this kind of thinking, or rather uh, lack of thinking, where it's just like start with a hatred and then uh, sort of move from there. <laughs> it's very frustrating to me. Yeah. Uh, all right. So we had some beautiful people write into us and call into us. Uh, so let's get right to that. I'll start us off with uh, with our friend Stu, who says, Dear Frank and Dan, you know, Frank, you will recall that we asked sort of, we, we talked about um, people's experience with the first time their family saw them doing whatever the thing is that they that, that family does not do, right. you know, drinking or whatever. Oh, right, yeah. And Stu says, uh, I was raised in a reform, a.k.a. liberal Jewish home. My father was religious, but my my mother was, I think, a closeted atheist. Hmm. To their dismay, I married a Christian. Mm -hmm. So right off the bat, I did something against the rules of my family when I married someone who was not Jewish. Mm. Over the years, we celebrated Christmas with my wife's family and Hanukkah with my family. I don't know if my parents knew we had a Christmas tree in the house. I su suspect they did not. But over the first couple of decades of my marriage... They were never at my house during the Christmas season, so they never saw it. Hmm. We lived 200 miles apart. Mm -hmm. uh, Stu throws in the note that many American Reformed Jews have Christmas trees since it's uh, considered a secular holiday. <laughs> uh, but as a child growing up, he did not. Uh, a year after my father died, my mother came to visit. Our Christmas tree was up as it had been every Christmas since we got married. She tried not to show it, but my mother was surprised to see the tree in our living room. Soon, soon it became clear that she was very upset by it. Oh. She blamed it on the, quote, leftover grief for my father, which was surely uh, at least partly true. But she did not comment on how seeing the Christmas tree, or, but she did comment on how seeing the Christmas tree threw her for a loop. Fortunately, we were able to talk it through and come to, to an understanding until her death, she never visited again during Christmas season. In true American fashion, we simply agreed to pretend that the problem didn't exist. <laughs> yeah. Huh. That's, a, that's very interesting. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, we all, we all had our cultural things. Even though his mother was not religious. Yeah, uh, that's interesting, isn't it? It's a cultural thing. Right. So there you go. Um... 
we had a voicemail, did we not? We uh, we do indeed, yeah. Um, this is from a listener with kind of a question slash idea about a drag queen story hour. Ooh. Do you mean Satan pedophile hour? <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's have a listen. Okay. Uh, hey, Frank and Dan. This is Richard. I uh, love your podcast. I just had an idea about all the um, drama that's going on with drag queen story hours what if um someone did a drag drag queen story hour where a woman would dress up like a drag queen but then i'm just wondering if that would like confuse conservatives to the point where they wouldn't know what to make of it um just just an idea uh let me know what you think thanks (laughs) oh my god (laughs) that's amazing I've never thought of this, and I think it's fucking brilliant. <laughs> women dressed as women, uh-huh. as drag, like in over the top makeup and over yeah. the top hair, and a big dress and everything. Doing, yeah, it's drag. I love drag, it. drag, drag. I don't know if you you caught yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just drag. It's just yeah. Uh, and you call. You know what you do? You you continue to call it drag story hour or drag queen story yeah. hour and it's but it's all oh my god pack heat if you do this like get <laughs> make sure that you are protected make you know have a whole bunch of very big guys with you yeah because i'm i'd be worried but that would be brilliant if if literally you don't know if you're going to get a like a literally a gay man in drag or just a woman who's dressed up crazy yeah i love it's it so funny like i we we should very, start a confuse very, very the right yeah. campaign no, totally that's because they're because none of their arguments are based on anything in reality right. they're very easy to confuse <laughs> we can just confuse the shit out of them and then they won't know what they're doing yeah. they won't know what's happening yeah, that's, I love that's really it. funny uh, Larry wrote into us, hey guys, you were talking about the nuns on a show from the 4th of July. So here I am after being brutally abused with the whole pandemic by the folks uh, that call themselves brothers slash sisters in Christ. I don't relate to being a nun. I found a friend, or, or sorry, I found a thread on Reddit and the term is exploding. We are done. Mm-hmm. Uh, which leads me to the question for you two to answer. How do you guide someone who was majorly religious four years ago, someone who was leading worship every Sunday, volunteering every week, and is now over that part of life? I have friends, a great medical career, the trust and confidence of coworkers, family, uh, family except those still in the Baptist slash Trump cult, and I'm doing very well. I'm at rest and peace, but still feel like I'm missing something or not doing something. Hmm. There's a hint of guilt there that I need to that I need to do something. Hmm. Hmm. That's an interesting question. I mean, yeah, we don't think about the fact that when you leave religion, you leave also like a culture. You mm-hmm. leave a, a a set of rituals and a set of yeah. uh, uh, practices. Right. Well, there are those groups, you know, like, um, what, what, what's the one called? Like Sunday, Sunday assembly, Sun, Sunday. Yeah. That one, something like that. Um, and yeah, there's a couple, there's a few groups that have meetings every Sunday. Yeah. Uh, so that just, just that, that are fascinating. You know, they often bring in speakers that are, uh, you know, scientists, or yeah. interesting people. Yeah. And so that's a cool way to go. So there's um, again, but but it has that sense of community and regu- like you're going and attending something. Now for me, I don't want something in on that Sunday morning slot time slot. Yeah, that's for brunch. Yeah, that's what are you brunch about? or laying in bed or just whatever. Just drinking right. cup after cup after cup of coffee. <laughs> and getting totally buzzed, right? Like whatever it is yeah. that has filled that that time slot for me, I don't want something there. But I think a lot of people do, right? They miss yeah. that. Um, and there are things that can can fit in. You know what else could work? I think Volunteering, just fun. That's what I was yeah. going to say. Yeah, absolutely. There are some wonderful secular groups out there that that are doing really good work. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, if you're a if you've got a medical career, I'm sure that there are ways that you could volunteer that the rest of us can't. That's totally true. Yeah, that could be really cool. Yeah, but also just if that doesn't appeal to you, you know, if you don't want to, you know, do your work after you do your work, uh, yeah, you can. There's lots of opportunity to go and volunteer for non-religious organizations. Mm -hmm. Please don't volunteer for religious yeah. organizations. There's plenty of secular yeah. organization to volunteer for. Or go do go um, get on the board of something, right? Go, some good yeah. community organization that. I mean, and you'll find community yeah. there, and you'll you know, and you'll also be doing good in the world. Uh, these are all very good impulses mm -hmm. to have. Yeah. Uh, but just note that, like it, they yeah, they don't own that. Right. The uh, the religious do not own that. And uh, and we shouldn't cede it to them. Right. There's still ways to find community and purpose and community yeah. involvement and all of that. So, yeah. All right. And Jim has written written in now. Frank, two of my stories today took place in Michigan. Uh oh. Uh, but not my favorite part of Michigan. Not my favorite uh, Michigan Michigander uh, city to say. And Jim has written in. To correct our pronunciation of a certain town oh, no. in Michigan. Really? Um, which I pronounce and probably will continue to pronounce ham tram. <laughs> <laughs> of course it's ham tramp. Which is spelled H-A-M-T-R-A-M-C-K. <laughs> I know how to read English, Jim. <laughs> ham tramp. <laughs> but uh, but Jim has written in to say, in case you need to cover events there again, the city of Hamtramck <laughs> is pronounced as if there is a vowel in the last syllable, as in Hamtramck, oh. uh, with emphasis on the middle syllable. Okay. Uh, the city is an enclave surrounded by Detroit and is used and used to be a major uh, the major Polish neighborhood. Mm. In recent years, it has become more diverse, including a growing Muslim population <laughs> there in. Ham tramp. Thanks, Jim. Uh, that is useful information. Um, that we will never pay attention to. It's way too much fun to say ham tramp. Yeah. What, why are you trying to correct it? I say go to the place and correct it with them. Yeah. So it's ham. They're saying it wrong. Ham tramic. Is that what he, yeah. he said it is? Mm -hmm. Ham tramic. I don't see. Which, I don't see it. I don't no. see it. It's clearly ham. -tramped. If you want me to pronounce as if there is a vowel there, <laughs> chuck in a vowel, you guys. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you for that, Jim. We have some folks to thank. Uh, I'm going to start us off with uh, with Bruce. Mm. Thank you, Bruce. Bruce is now a deacon in our magical pretend priesthood. Mm -hmm. So. Go, go out and cast some spells or whatever you want to do with that. Uh, thank you so much, Bruce. And we have Heather, who's a new priest. Ooh. So thank you, Heather. You get to... Heather, you got even more magic powers like, that don't exist. Yeah. So that's amazing. Go out. Yeah, you can you go and like waggle your fingers at someone on the street and, <laughs> and convince them that you're doing something to uh, them. And uh, if you'd like to join these kind folk, you can do so. Go to our website. ThankGodImAtheist.com and uh, click on the support tab. And there's some options. We have Patreon and PayPal options available. So we should we should start a level of priesthood called Hamtram. <laughs> you can be a if you give us a lot of money, you can be a Hamtram. <laughs> uh, right. As always, Dan, we have our top donor to thank, our Lord and Savior, Devas. More show coming up. Well, Frank, Dan, I was uh, I was perusing the internet and found an article about uh, this. You know, we teased it at the beginning. This new uh, little uh, museum. You and I, uh, when we were talking about this earlier, expressed our love for uh, for small little private museums. Oh, they're the they, best. They are both the worst and the best things yeah, out there. They just they go rogue in wonderful yeah. ways. Yeah. And it's usually just a piles of, you know, um, 
of stuff from an, like a bad antique store, right? Yeah, like, it's somebody's <laughs> niche interest that they had so much crap that somebody was like, just open a museum already. Yeah. Uh, so that's great. Uh, this one is in uh, old Old Town Edinburgh. Mm. Um, in in apparently in a uh, 17th century stone building, which wow. sounds great. Wow! Um, it is the Museum of Magic, Fortune Telling, and Witchcraft. And, yeah. Uh, okay. And you know, one of the focuses is legitimate, and mm. that is the focus. Uh, apparently, Scotland was particularly shitty about quote unquote riches, witches, mm. uh, in their history. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it wasn't just the Massachusetts Bay Colony that went nuts. He, no. <laughs> and you know, they, all the, the sort of European countries mm. got in on the act at some point, probably. Hmm. But you know, they passed Scotland passed a law in 1563, which was the Witchcraft Act, uh, and it was a law until the 1730s, uh, which grant which allowed people to like torture and punish and persecute people anyone who was like a witch and you know you go ahead and figure out who's the witch and who isn't Mm. there are a lot there have been many uh sort of proposed ways of telling who's a witch none of them made any sense none of them were any smarter than weigh her against a duck (laughs) Uh, apparently under this act Nearly uh, in a population of a million, about a million people in Scotland, nearly four thousand people were accused, and twenty five hundred people were executed for witchcraft, which was five times the European average at the time. So wow. Scots got into it, and in, wow. in no small part due to the fact that King James himself who is King James the sixth, I think of Scotland and King James the first of England later was obsessed with witches. That's confusing. Yeah. Honestly, get your act together. If you're going to, if you're going to do monarchy, don't confuse (laughs) us. At least don't confuse us. Um, King James was, was obsessed with witches wrote, published a book himself called demonology. Mm. Um, that was self published. (laughs) And that says a lot right there. (laughs) <laughs> it's available only on Amazon and uh yeah. I think I think when you're the king you get to self-publish uh whatever you kind want. Of, what, uh, whatever you want to. Uh but yes, this became a th- th- this is why Shakespeare actually wrote Macbeth because it was like a he was trying to get in good with the new king. Mm. After, you know, he was already, he was in good with Elizabeth, but then she kicked it and suddenly he had to mm. ingratiate himself. So mm. he wrote a play about bad witches because mm. uh, he knew he had a guy that loved a good witch hunt. <laughs> That's amazing. It's, it's just, you know, here's the thing. Right now we have a former president who was a criminal and claims that anytime anyone says he was a criminal and or tries to prosecute him for being a criminal uh he yells witch hunt all the time if you're over on truth social which don't be but you know you'll see the phrase witch hunt a lot but it's it's useful to remember that there you there used to be real witch hunts that ended in like innocent people dying yeah or not innocent people, you know. I, I mean, innocent of witchcraft because there ain't such a thing. At least not the magical kind. Right. But yeah, I mean, the this is this is a, an an interesting thing. So, you know, it's just one of the, it, it's so funny because obviously one because one of the things about this uh, museum that we're talking about is that they're kind of they're all witchy people. It was yeah. founded by people who are into. Witchy by, culture by witches for witches, right? <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I really enjoyed getting onto their website, uh-huh. and I clicked on the tab that says "Meet Our Tarot Readers," and I'm Ooh. not. I'm not going to make fun of people's names, but um, they've got some fun, inventive. Witch, witchy sounding names they've given themselves names yeah i have no problem except with for tracy yourself. jenkins she did oh tracy 
I like Tracy Jenkins <laughs> in amongst Lark and oh. Meadow and uh, and Tom. Yeah, <laughs> I guess there's Tom too. Okay, oh, but anyway, yeah, but yeah. So it's by witches for witches, and uh, so I mean, don't go to this museum expecting, you know, like a balanced approach <laughs> to the topic. Viewpoint. Yeah. I mean, you know, they are bound to agree. You know, I agree with them that witch hunting and uh, also the killing of people perceived to be witches is bad. Oh, yeah. Totally. Uh, so I think we can find that common ground. Mm -hmm. But uh, in terms of like, ooh, look at this amulet or these, this cool bottle that was used for herbs or whatever. It's like, okay. <laughs> I Oh, great. I guess there's a lot of things like, you know, Blair Witch stick figures on the wall. And, mm. you know, you, there, <laughs> our, one of our favorites is, is an image of a, a mannequin holding a crow <laughs> or a lady with a bird. Yeah. I don't know. It's, I, I, I do admit to finding it all so very stupid. I don't like magical thinking just at all. Any kind of magical thinking, whether it's, you know, astrology or ley lines or mm. witchy, you know, you know, the smudging thing. First of all, burning sage smells awful. It just <laughs> smells terrible. But it wards off evil spirits, Dan. They don't <laughs> like it either. Yeah, it wards off my spirit. And I <laughs> frankly don't like to be warded off. I was there for a reason. Why are you warding me off? <laughs> Maybe I'm a bad spirit. I think some people like the smell. Oh, I know they do. Yeah. Plenty of people like it. Plenty of people don't. Yeah. So, you know. I don't find it that offensive. I The, it the act itself offends me, but um, <laughs> the smell doesn't. Oh, man. You know. I, I think a lot of people that do things like tarot and, and smudging and whatever have a, a quasi figurative sense of it which is to say you know it they don't think that it's really magic they think that it's 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 a it is a a metaphor mm. i am i am doing this thing I, i'm smudging to sort of clear my own air to clear my head it is a ritualistic way for me to say i am now uh carving out this time and this space hmm. for you know, with purpose for a specific idea for, you know, I'm for meditation or for, for thought. Mm -hmm. I have no problem with that, but it's when you start to want to believe the thing, you know, you used to do tarot readings. I thought, you were, it, I thought you it was went through funny. A phase. Yeah. I thought it was funny. Yeah. And I mean, I never took it seriously if that's no. what you're saying. But no, what I'm saying is like that that's the correct sort of approach is like <laughs> this is fun, this is playful, this is maybe interesting. I, mean, I think I knew officially what like two or three of the cards actually meant. Like, the rest <laughs> of it was just making it up. Yeah. Right. Which oh. nobody else does. Nobody else is just <laughs> making it up. Oh, well, but it's good if you know the story about like a certain card because it's Ooh, like because people are always like cups is really isn't there like the end of the world some the, some sort of apocalyptic right. right one and it's like oh and people are always like oh that's so bad. and you're like no no it's not bad it's just about change it's and about change, change. Is good right? it's always just about change right oh no you got death oh that's just about change don't worry right yeah exactly yeah uh, yeah i i think i think that there's a space there's there's a place for practices as long as you don't go believing that there's anything magical or mystical happening there's just there's plenty of space for like that to be psychologically useful mm -hmm. look at a bunch of interesting pictures and you know let it tell you what it's telling you about your own psyche you know what i mean yeah, it's, don't think it's that a, anything magical is happening, right? It's a mirror. Yeah, in in, in, in in an s in in or m probably less of a mirror as a what are what are the the, the ink blot 
Yeah. You know? Or a little Rorschach test. Yeah, sort exactly. Of thing. Right. Like you're gonna see what you want to see, and that's right. interesting. Or right. it might, or you're gonna like see what, something that you do, don't want to see, right? And why don't you want to see it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and let that you know, let it be sort of a signpost for for you and where you are, and you know, ask yourself some questions in the process. All of these things, you know, astrology is the same way. If your if your horoscope really speaks to you today, then you just had something really speak to you today. Yeah. Does it mean that? the alignment of planets has predicted something about your personal life? Yeah, but, well, like, you can uh, connect to, you know, Garfield or <laughs> right? Andy Cap if we're just talking about stuff that's in the newspaper. <laughs> I, I now or, want or there the to bridge be move. someone... The bridge move for the day. Yeah, I want some now I want someone to make it their sort of spiritual practice to read the funny paper and uh <laughs> what is Blondie telling me today? Get 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 some really, you know, Beetle Bailey really has something to say about my life today. Oh, Dagwood. <laughs> Making that's, your hoagies. That sandwich looks delicious. <laughs> what is that saying about my life? <laughs> All right. Well, uh, if you would like to sternly chastise us <laughs> for uh, putting down something that's very meaningful in your life, you are welcome to do so. Write into us, podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. Or call and leave us a voicemail. We'd love to hear your voice. The telephone number is 424 666 8442. Yeah, go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash TGI Atheist. Click the like button. And if you'd like to join one of our members only lounges, they're great little spaces to find like minded people and chat. Um, go to our website, thinkgodimatheist.com slash members only. Yeah. Uh, thanks so much to the Red Rock Hot Club for the use of their fine music. And thanks to Gordon Johnston for the use of his music. And thank you to everybody here for tuning in. We love it. <laughs> Thanks so much. Bye-bye.